Hello? Hello? Hi, John? Yes. Hi, how are you? It's uh, Patrick from UPCO. Hey, Patrick, how are you? Pretty good, how are you? Doing well, thanks. So, uh, where are you uh, calling us from, John? Uh, we're in New York. You're in New York. Um, are we waiting on anyone else on your end to get on the call? or? Nope, this is it for now. This is it for now. Okay. Uh, would you be able to tell me a little, am I on the correct uh, website, first of all, make sure our screen sharing is working, uh, lodgenet.com? Is that your guys' primary uh, domain? Uh, y yeah, yeah. So we, um, I don't know how familiar you are with LodgeNet. No, I'm not. I'd love a uh, top-level overview of um, what you guys do and, you know, what you're looking for, I suppose, from the web presence end, so. Sure. Well, um, <clears throat> you guys had reached out to us, so we're, we're interested in, in, um, in hearing what, uh, what you guys are all about and, and what you have to offer in terms of uh, uh, analytics. Uh, but um, LodgeNet is um, the largest provider of guest entertainment services to the hospitality uh, and healthcare industries. So we, uh, uh, if you stay in a hotel, uh, we are more than likely are powering the TV and video on demand systems. Uh, we um, in New York we run all of the mobile interactive and advertising services out of the New York office and uh, and that's what I do best up for this group. Okay now Brett, now I am familiar with uh, LogNet from what you guys do on the uh, on the end of the actual delivery of the product. Yeah I was just curious about it on the website end but we can, we can, we yeah. can, uh, go ahead, Tom. Yeah, so quick, so this is our, 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 our corporate website, um, but we, um, we are looking at um, some other consumer-facing opportunities um, where I think what you guys do might be of more interest to us. Okay, let me ask one more question. Are you currently, are you familiar with the analytics or intelligence uh, technologies you guys are currently using for your website? Are you directly involved in that department, or let's? Yeah, um, I think we use Google Analytics. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So no nothing, problem. Uh, we don't have. We, yeah, we don't have a uh, anything else besides that. And then, uh, and then on the mobile side, we uh, we work with Flurry for our app. All right. Great. Yeah. So um, on our end. On our end, what we'll uh, usually do in this case, obviously we reached out, is just start giving a 10 to 15 minute capability overview. And from there, if there's interest to dig deeper and get a lot more focused, we uh, we can move on from there. So that's uh, just the short objective okay. of the intro call. And please feel free to interrupt me at any time. Sure. OK. So um, we're a, UPCO is a digital marketing intelligence company. And in simple terms, we provide two benefits. Um, number one is in analytics and understanding your website traffic. And number two is um, we, we measure competitive trends on, on uh, competitors across the Internet, both on an industry-specific and global level. So we have two integrated tools that basically give complete intelligence into what's happening on the Internet, both on your site and also the landscape. That's the uh, top level. Okay. So our biggest, okay. um, and to focus, of course, on what you're currently using, um, our biggest differentiator from a traditional analytics tool such as Google's, um, such as Google's, Adobe's, IBM is usually the uh, mainstream, mainstream what people are using is that um, an analytics tool, if I'm on your website and I go from link to link, a data record's being created basically on the transition. You know, when someone goes from a page to a page, you get one record that says this is what your visitor did. Sure. So what we're doing that's different is we are the first technology that's capturing the entire online experience. So to dig deep, what that means is if I'm on your website and I say my name is Bob and I click delete and I change my name, we would be detecting, um, we would be able to know the typing speed of that user what was entered, what was deleted, what was placed in individually. So we're storing and letting, uh, completing, storing a complete record of mouse movements, clicks, 
every movement made from both mobile devices and television. So that provides a much better understanding of the user experience of what your um, customers are trying to accomplish, as well as on the sales end, increasing ROI on what your site is trying to represent individually. Okay. So that I'm sorry, <clears throat> can you go back when you said every, you know, every uh, step from mobile device and TV? Uh, what, what do you mean by TV? Oh, I'm sorry, I, I said a mobile device, and the I, I misspoke there. We just mentioned T. I meant um, from a from a computer, a traditional computer. Which could okay. Be, you know, okay. So, yeah. So, so um, so the story. Sorry, so, sorry, just one more step. When you, when you say mobile device, you're talking about mobile web. Uh, mobile or tablet? Yeah, we're talking about visiting a website. We're talking about everything on the website, and so when website visitors are on your website or any other um, website asset you own. Okay. So that's from the diff from the data and our core differentiator. Um, the other side of that coin is because we're storing everything done on your website, we're also able to recreate the entire user experience of all of your website traffic. So this example here would be what your visitors are actually doing on your site. We have this uh, integrated into all of the traditional data, where you can essentially play the record. So oh, that's that, interesting. And it looks like this this is the same presentation you would get. I'm sorry, when you say presentation, you meant um, this is what you would see on the company end? Exactly. Yes, yep. absolutely. Yeah. I'm I'm just gonna run through two or three different views. But yeah, this is what you would see. Your company would see this for all of your website traffic. The, both if you want to look at um if you want to look at traffic as a whole or individually, if you want to do a search and say, I only want to see traffic for my highest value customers, you can define them in any way you want that's, you know, uh, based on based on the data that's on your website. So that's right. that's that's, okay. that's that's the top level um, asset we're providing here. And little notes aside from that is I'm going to show you um, from a mobile perspective, I suppose, how deep and how different that really uh, really is compared to just looking at a piece of data. You know, when people visit your website for mobile, they're using their fingers. They're a lot of times using two fingers at once. They're using one finger to kind of navigate on the page and one to move around. You know, um, this example here is the picture as it would be replayed from an actual mobile session in particular. So that's the finger movement of your customers, of the visitors on your website. You can understand how to customize and basically achieve your objectives a lot clearer when you understand what they're doing. Right. That's cool. Okay. Okay. So um, aside from that, so these were both kind of our de facto views, just kind of showing the capabilities. Aside from that, I just show a uh, five minutes into the actual product to understand, you know, practical use case uh, with these scenarios. So. So aside from that, yeah, it's a lightweight application. It's not going to affect your website. It's a lighter footprint than Google Analytics. It's uh, you log in directly from a website from a website on our end, so it doesn't require any um, on-premise installation. You, we deliver directly on your website a code. From there, we install our uh, intelligence technology. And traditionally, where you'd see all different points of data we can click from each point of data. So in this case, if you guys wanted to take a look at um, traffic coming from Google specifically, let's say, we have this panoramic view of each visitor that where you can choose you know, what you want displayed based on what we store. So this panoramic view is just the breakdown of uh, seeing the traffic individualized to be able to have a better understanding of what's going on. OK. And, and sorry, we talk about the implementation again. We, the, you, there is code that you give us that we implement. Yeah, it's the same process. To be the long story short, same process as Google. It's 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 okay. something thrown on right. the page. So yeah. So yeah. um, yeah. from this from this view of an individual, uh, each individual visit, you can play the records directly. Well, I guess we have no one. I, I should probably take a closer look if someone's on my site for a second there. But um, you can play it directly, or you can click View Details on any view. And what that does is that uh, I'll give it a second to load here. This gives a deeper view 
that shows the entire history of that particular customer on your site. So what that means is in this case, um, we're going from what happened the one time they visited, that's a great example as well, the one time they visited to being able to look at all of their past visits from one dashboard. So if you, if you know, if, if uh, John Doe visited your site 150 times in the past, you have one view to go seamless from each individual visit to understand the experience or to look up specific data or patterns or trends. So that's just an example right. of the interconnectivity um, going back and forth. The other, the other, just okay. the other, just main point to make about this uh, module is you can create different. You know, when you're, when you want to segment the information and use it for an action on your website, you could say the people who come from China to my website and have been here three times, I want to treat their visit differently. Which means that you can make a different pop up that shows up for them. You can show different content on your website to customize all of those experiences. And of course, then be able to justify what happens and you know the added benefit on that end. And, and, and sorry, how are we tying those actions to your analytics? Um, they're tied in because you define where you want the actions executed. So what we do with the analytics is I don't know if you're are you familiar with uh, t I don't know if you guys use a particular tagging system. I don't know if you're. Um, such as. The, the, long, the, the long story short, if you want to create a label that says people from China who came to my site three times in the past, mm -hmm. you would create a label. Once that label okay. is created, it would be applied to all of the, only those specific visitors. Once those different labels are applied, you can choose which action you want shown if, if it's not the norm. Did that make sense, John? Okay. But, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Okay, so that's you know I'm fairly I'm, I'm fairly technical, so it's, uh, it's uh, I, I'm, I'm with you. Okay, no problem. So um, yeah, so that's you know that's the general premise of it is yeah being able to that's the only reason we push the data end as well. These aren't if these aren't just videos that you have to dig through individually. Everything you see is also stored as a data point, so you can search through there and say I want to see these scenarios. I want to treat these people this way and that way. So. It's uh, yeah. So that, those are the top level differentiators from the intelligence standpoint. And um, aside from that, I don't you know dig too deep into all the different um, modules. It just we, we have a lot of options to to play with the data, slice and dice it as you please. And when you can do this with a thousand times as many data points for customer, it lets you drill down deeper, get more focused, and also be able to justify everything visually on top of the data. So that's the main right. um, added value we have internally. Okay. Um, aside, um, go ahead, John. No, sorry. Go ahead. Okay, I was going to say um, the last view I sh the last view I show from a raw capability standpoint with our analytics is um, this is hit and miss depending on what your objectives are within your site. Um, we showed the views of seeing you know an individual customer visit. We also have a live dashboard. So if you wanted to watch your visitors in bulk not just each individual, you would be able to monitor and engage your live traffic. Um, this can be also be applied within that segmentation labeling system to any segment. So if you only wanted to watch people once again from China who visited three times in the past, you can click, um, you can click live within our dashboard and that opens up the view of your live traffic. So um, this is this okay, is, is that, used. And you're seeing that at an aggregate level. Correct. All the users. Okay. Well, the aggregate by default. You know, if you have if you have uh, lots of users by default, you can you can filter that to only see specific segments as well. So if let's say you have okay. a client or competitor and you want to label him, you can say I only want to see these people. It might not be worth you know monitoring my traffic. So. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's on the raw capability end. It's integrated through our analytics. You can chat directly to that website traffic. You can label them. Um, you can label them manually on top of you know setting filters to change their path while they're actually visiting. So it all just comes down to having complete control, whether it's used for closing or usability and understanding on your site as a whole. Right. Okay. Um, very slick. Looks good. Do you have any questions at this point, John? Or? Yeah, yeah. Just to go back, when you, um, how when uh, so I understand how how you're getting the uh, 
the analytics for our site. How are you guys tracking competitor sites? Okay, that's a uh, bit of a different. Uh, do you have uh, familiarity much? I know you said you have technical in, I guess, in S you have uh, an SEL, or I don't know if you guys use any, I should probably get out of my test environment here, <laughs> but uh, use anything along the lines of a compete or quantcast? Uh, I, I'm, yeah, I'm familiar with both of the products. Okay. So is it is it a panel-based solution you guys use, or? Well, yeah. What our deliverable to get to uh, our actual deliverable we'd use is you would be able to define your key competitors, and um, mm -hmm. we're storing we're storing the source code on every website on the internet in one searchable database. It's the largest one on the internet. As an example, Google has approximately 30 million listed within the search engine because site owners are responsible to kind of make themselves known and get indexed. Our end, every time a website gets registered, we're storing the information and we're using it only for high-level analysis. So if you wanted to do a search, once again, to aggregate and say how many websites um, how many websites within the Internet are doing this to understand emerging technologies and the trends with increase in traffic. You know, that, that's the top-level uh, example if you want to look at it very broad. But more practically, the point is for competitors if we're monitoring their traffic changes, their source code changes to say, hey, abc.com, my main competitor, had a 20% jump in traffic last month. I also noticed that he had 20,000 more Facebook likes, and they changed two headlines. There's usually a correlation there where it's worth taking a closer look and obviously right. understanding your competition clear. Okay. The, the other okay. example. So, yeah, our, the, the just last example to bring up here is we have industry listed below. Um, the second end of the competitive intelligence is you guys would define what your industry is from a keyword perspective. So let's say that you said that my competitors are people using the word lodge. I'm sure this isn't accurate. Using the word lodge within their website five times and are located in the United States. That's what we're going to define as our competition we're able to do a search okay. on the internet and say there is currently 5,000 you know websites we're going to call your competition. You right, can, can, we, can we, we can be more precise than that I'm guessing can we actually oh, give you the five. names of Oh absolutely no, you can choose websites yourself. You can choose the websites okay. yourself okay. completely. Or the point is uh, you know the macro capability is just the more to know it's there. You know you can define your competitors as two or you can define patterns. So based on that for the larger data you would choose what your KPIs are to take. You know the, our defaults I believe is the technology that's updated as a whole. If someone's using um, jQuery as an example 3% more all of these websites have added this. If they're using Google Analytics that's a 20% increase from last month. Um, you just have automated awareness into those increases so on the top levels, you don't need to dig around and do as much research. You know, it's not always going to give you the complete answer, but it's going to give you that first point to not get left behind. If I invent XYZ technology tomorrow and your competitors are using it successfully, it's not going to take you five years to understand it's out there. Right. Um, okay. The page load right. speed is just an example of another, you know, measurable. Everyone has their own. We keep our uh, intro meeting real, real broad because everyone has their own specific KPIs using all these capabilities you're going to relate to, you know, your industry company objectives. Yeah. So we're just throwing these out as, you know, understand that we have control to manipulate this and define this to add value in your use case. Okay. This is one more module to show within there is, um, this is, you know, so what, what we do is we have quite a few different views you can see to monitor um, what's going on on the Internet. We just tried to choose a few different aggregate views that let you know, um, let you know angles that aren't currently stored um, in other sources. What, what this example, are, are you familiar with the term auto search, uh, what auto search is? For instance, if you go to Google and you type in the term, um, okay, so, so you're familiar. What, uh, what we're doing in this case Okay, so what we're doing in this case is we're monitoring the auto search results, the basically the consumer average terms used for a variety of terms throughout. The, actually, in this case, this is directly synced. So any term on the internet, if you uh, if you want to see how LogSnet is commonly searched from different websites and different auto searches, you have all of this data displayed in a simple way, and anything you see here can be stored and integrated into our uh, analytics themselves. You know, so. Uh, that's a lot. 
and what usually would happen here, you guys are not going to, you know, um, if it's a more common word, it's going to have more results and engines. But you would probably want to see it. If you're a retail site, you're going to want to choose retail sites for understanding the relevant auto search. So we have this integrated uh, with, with uh, not this isn't for every website, ones that do have auto search. So this is just an example of trying to get extra value that's, um, you know, uh, that's not currently out there in other tools on the market. So. Okay. Does that um, make sense? Yeah, yeah. Um, so can you tell me a little bit about uh, about your your company? What, how long have you guys been around? So we've been around um, as a as under Upgo. We were registered a year and a half ago. We've we just uh, launched publicly approximately three months ago. But we have been servicing outside. These two products have been uh, built over the last six, seven years. We've been doing um, SEO and consulting under other company names, basically our internal team for the last five to six years. So we basically moved from okay. using other tools and adding value to websites to simultaneously creating our own. So while our tool is fairly new, um, on that note, we it gives us a lot more flexibility and precision where you're not going to have six degrees of separation between the development and, you know, changing what the dashboard's used for your case. Right. Um, <clears throat> okay. And then and what is the, um, what does the, uh, what is your, your model, billing model here? Our billing model is there's a setup cost that's on average uh, 10 to 15 hours per website. That's billable at 250 an hour, and it's uh, deliverable. Our setup time is usually approximately three weeks. We set up the website because the videos and all of these are, you know, synced. All of everything you see isn't completely out of the box. From there, it's based variable based on monthly traffic with a starting point in the uh, 500 a month range. So uh, depending on, uh, we would run a test to see how much traffic you're getting a month because our hard cost is the data storage itself. So that's the long story right. short of it. Um, aside from that, usually any enterprise, to be uh, honest, is going to want a lot of things integrated into what they're currently doing in ways that aren't. And in that case, we have that in-house capability, and that would be charged on an hourly basis, such as if you wanted to show this chart within your email dashboard, within other tools you're using. We have all of those capabilities. So the build is usually, you know, we'll spend on average um, three weeks if you want everything out of the box, if you want things really integrated and fine-tuned to a lot of different employee dashboards and accounts. Um, we're probably looking average of two to three months. So once the build's done, though, the hard work's over with, and this is all, uh, you know, this all, uh, from a capability standpoint, it's not going to you, you can't store more information than we're currently storing. So when we talk about people ask us, you're explaining your differentiators in a month, is someone else going to explain the differentiators from there? Um, data is finite. You can store these movements. So the fact that we're storing the complete experience, you know, you're going to be set for a while once you take that step. So, Right. Okay. So <clears throat> going back to the setup, when you say a couple of weeks, you're talking it's, it's 250 an hour at, I mean, you're saying a week is 40 hours, is that right? So it's no, no, hours. I'm sorry. It's, uh, it's 10 to 15 hours for an average website at 250 an hour. Okay. Our time frame, we, we do simultaneous implementations. You know, our time frame is on average three weeks. Three weeks if you okay. want it delivered on launch.net okay. as is. Now, that, yeah, that wasn't at full hour. We, uh, the, now, the only premise was that if you want other customizations, anything done in-house, we have the in-house capability. Yeah. We're not going to leave you and say, figure it out as programmers. Because sure. the, uh, the industry. Um, and, then, and then, sorry, okay. And then once the. The monthly usage fees. The monthly usage starts at uh, 500, but that's dependent on your traffic load. So we would need to right. basically so what, run. What a is that? Go ahead, John. And what does that sliding scale look like? Well, the sliding scale, the ballpark is if. Uh, do you happen to know your monthly unique page views? You, I don't know if that's. Sometimes it's proprietary information. Sometimes. Um, yeah, I will. Assuming it's provided, you know, for this particular site, not it's not huge volume. But for <clears throat> other things that we do, it might be, yeah, uh, it might be heavier. So basically, once it goes above 50k monthly page views, that's where the scale starts sliding. A ballpark is if you if you're a site that gets over a million monthly page views, it's in the range of uh, 4,000 a month. That's you know the long story short. But we do need to run a test because our hard cost is. Based on movement and you know time spent on the site, more than it is just page views. So we run a test, and that's where the averages lie. So 
we would just run, you know, a one-time test over the course of the day, see where you'd load, and get that up on tune. But if you guys are under, like we said, under the um, under the 50k monthly range, it's most likely going to be the low. It's going to be the lower number. So. Okay. Um, okay. Well, this is very interesting. The um, I've seen, uh, you know, a few competitive offerings similar to this, but um, the, the way you guys are doing this is certainly unique. Um, so um, let me go back and uh, talk to some folks internally. Um, who who would be our con point of contact moving forward? You guys? Well, I'm um, well, I, I'm the. I'm the uh, CEO. I jump on maybe one, when I basically when I want to learn more with the company, I'll send you the appropriate sales director to deal with. Um, okay. I, okay. I'll send you that via um, email after the call. So I mean, we're we're open. I can do a presentation to dig deeper and you know show use cases. Um, that's usually yeah. That may be is. as we um, yeah as a, as a as a next step. But um, uh, very impressive. I mean, do you, just from your personal standpoint, do you guys have interest more, um, would you have interest in both the analytics and the competitive intelligence or gear more towards one? Because all of this is modulized as well. It's, you know, you don't need, um, what would be the focus yeah, I, of it? It would be more, more, more the analytics. Yeah. Yeah, so um, that's for, what... Um, you know, for us, we're, we're by, kind of by far the largest player in the space. Um, mm -hmm. So um, we're... You know, of course, interested um, in our yeah. competitors, but uh, we're, we're more interested in kind of getting a better feel for for our user base and how they're interacting with our products. Yeah, that's what I was. That's why I'd ask you the. And you know, it's always easiest to talk once we do the base capability overview. Then we can have it a lot more targeted. But um, that's why I'm. In your case, we would definitely want to chat and learn more about what your primary pain points and what your objectives are for your website. You know, if it's not a direct sales site, um, whether it's looking at whether it's looking at a contact form to be filled out, whether it's more information about visitors, or a lot of times it's even very high value visitors being labeled particularly and you know taking a much closer look. So if your guests doing are doing agency type work, so that's uh, that would be the next uh, point on our end always. So right, and, and as I mentioned, we may be going to develop some more consumer facing um, products, so uh, this would be even more um, useful. So. Um, Timing is right as we're starting to spec some of that stuff out. Um, last question on my agenda. What is your guys' usual? Um, how do you guys adopt technology on your site? What's the usual process if you're? Um, uh, I, that I'm not entirely sure. You mean how? In, I suppose how horizontal or vertical is your organization? Is it you know we we're just to know? Are you guys using a third party provider to run the website? Yeah, oh yeah. So we we would do everything internally. We have you know. It's, Agile development um, groups internally. Um, so yeah, it would be working directly with our um, our internal engineers. Okay. Yeah. So it sounds pretty straightforward. Yeah. Just a lot of times we'll get a deeper and see uh, see that someone has something completely outsourced, and we kind of have to go on to step one. So. Right. Um, um, okay. So let me. Um, uh, we'll. Uh, we will discuss this internally, but um, yeah, like I said, the, um, your product suite in uh, analytics are, are really slick, so um, thanks for reaching out. Yeah, thanks a lot, John. I'll reference you the contact to um, the best contact to reach. Feel free to email either of us at any time, presentation, and uh, the last detail as well, you asked about company size issue. Um, for a lot of companies who don't want to do a complete switchover, we do offer a pilot type offering where you'd have to pay the hard setup cost but have no kind of monthly payment or commitment to kind of get a feel on a particular segment and qualify internally. So that's just a point of reference. Right. It's usually, usually the first step with an enterprise who may need to, you know, us not being in business for the last 30 years um, might be the issue that's a hurdle where they'd want to integrate slower. So that's the last uh, point of reference. Right. Point of view, so. Okay. Yes. Uh, thank you for addressing that. All right. Thanks a lot, John. I enjoyed talking to you. Um, I'll send you a follow-up with uh, information to contact me. If you need anything else, just I'll reach out directly. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for the time. Thank you. Bye. Okay.